Well, anti-Israel protests have erupted out the front of the DNC, and this is how some activists clashed with police. Filmmaker Ami Horowitz was there and he took over the microphone and chanted a message of support for Israel. My name is Ami. I gotta tell you right now. Our media has is to there be a difference between genocide Joe and Kamala Killer? No. no! Are you with the media? And who the people no, are we'll there? No, move back the then. You, you, can't, be, you can't be in front of the police. That's right. I got one thing to say to you people. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, guy. Joining us now is Ami Horowitz. Ami, thank you for joining us. Well done. I don't think I'd be as brave as you to go out there and do what you did. Why did you feel it was so important to take over the microphone and what was the reaction? Yeah, there's a very fine line between bravery and stupidity. <laughs> uh, that might be me crossing over the line to stupidity if we're being totally honest and between friends here. Uh, look, it was important for me to make a, a point, a larger point here, right? Uh, these are a bunch of, let's, let's be frank, they're not pro-Palestinians. These are pro-Hamasniks. And they have a, um, look, they have a voice here. They're expressing their voice. And I want to make my voice clear as well. Uh, they're not just trying to save children in Gaza. Right? Let's be clear about this. That's fine. We can have a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. These are people who want to support Hamas and see the destruction of the state of Israel and writ large, the destruction of the Jewish people. And I wanted to make sure they understood that there are other voices out there. And uh, yeah, I sang a, a very old pro-Jewish, pro-Israel chant. The words meant, my nation lives. And uh, yeah, wanted to make clear they knew that people like us were out there. I wasn't gonna let what they are saying stand on its own. Well done. You've been calling out some of the disgusting anti-Semitic messages that have been spreading at these protests. In your opinion, in your observations, are the protests getting worse? Look, what we're seeing here is a preview of what the Democratic Party is moving towards, right? They're not currently a majority of the Democratic Party. Let's be clear. They are a minority, but a growing minority. Uh, the problem is, is that you have the Democratic Party, the Democratic leadership, abetting these people, right? You, we just saw uh, we just saw Joe Biden. I mean, when they wheeled him out at 3.30 uh, in the morning to give uh, his speech, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, these people have important points to make. Really? I'd like to know which point it was that they were making that he agrees with. Is it the destruction of the state of Israel? Is it burning down the DNC? Is it the fact they kept calling, they're calling him Genocide Joe and her <laughs> killer Kamala? By the way, I want to make something very clear. I know she's kowtowing these people, and so is he, but if they think they're going to win over their votes, they're wrong. I spent several days with these protesters. I spoke with them. Mm. I asked them questions. They are not going to support Kamala, and they're not supporting the Democratic Party. None of them. So if they think that by throwing Israel under the bus and then backing the bus over Israel, they're going to win Michigan or Georgia because both those places have large Arab voters, they are very, very mistaken. And the problem is, is they're, they're allowing these people to grow. It's Again, it's a, it's a very fast-growing segment, the Democratic Party. And if you want to see what the Democratic Party will look like in, let's say, five years, maybe less, just look at England and look at the Labour Party. See what they look like when it comes to Israel and anti-Semitism? And that's a preview of what the Democratic Party is becoming and where it's heading towards. Well, let's take a look at what's been happening at the DNC. This is what former U.S. President Barack Obama had to say. We do not need four more years of bluster and bumbling and chaos. We have seen that movie before, and we all know that the sequel is usually worse. Why are the Democrats so obsessed with targeting Donald Trump? Oh, you were talking about Donald Trump? I thought you were talking about uh, Joe Biden. Sorry. The, <laughs> the, the bubbly incompetence got me confused. I, I didn't know who he was talking about. Well, it's wild, um, isn't it? Four more years? It's like, why is he making that point? 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> really, I mean, look, the truth is, is that if, if you really asked Barack Obama what he really thought of Joe Biden, those words were actually the exact <laughs> That's his Joe Biden. Let's be honest. <laughs> Um, no, of course they're upset. They're they're obsessed with with Donald Trump because um, he he. It's, it's funny. Donald Trump has made significant inroads into a lot of their Democratic base, right? And they're scared of that. They're scared of the erosion of their own base. Um, if you look at the black voting, if you look at clearly Hispanic voting, even look at the at the labor unions. Um, these are all areas which have been the backbone of the Democratic Party, which have been eroding because Donald Trump is actually speaking to their issues. Now, when I say their issues, it's so funny. I was in an a, a Uber ride from Chicago, and I was talking to a, my, a black woman who was my Uber rider, and we were talking about politics. She kind of whispered to me. She said, you know, I'm, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. You know why? Because Donald Trump isn't speaking to black issues. What are black issues and Hispanic issues? American issues. Yeah. That's what they care about. They care about inflation. They care about the border. They care about crime. Democrats understand those are the three major issues facing our country. Total fail under Joe Biden and success under Donald Trump. Yeah. That's why they're obsessed. They have to find a way to blunt his move toward that base. And right now, yeah, Kamala may have had, it's a bit of a sugar high, I think, and he's, she certainly built up a little bit more of where she was with that, with those voting bases. But I think ultimately it's going to go back down to where it was. It will go back down to the mean. And I think they're frightened. And they should be. Well, to your point, it's been revealed that the U.S. added far less jobs than what was initially reported, according to new figures released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Total employment in March was more than 800,000 lower than what had been reported. That is a massive difference. A million jobs here, a million jobs there. So all of a sudden we're talking about real numbers, right? Yeah, a million jobs is a lot of jobs for you to kind of hide in the paperwork and say we created them when in reality they were never there, right? No, it's a big deal. And uh, it does speak to a larger issue on the complicity of these numbers, of the people compiling these numbers. Um, you know, it was very convenient that when they were trying, they were in a, in a dogfight with Donald Trump, those jobs somehow were created. By the way, I also want to point out that, yes, there has been job growth, but the vast majority of job growth in this country has been in the public sector and in healthcare. Those are the major places where the job growth has been, where the government has been doling out money, by the way, compounding inflation, because we can, as we expand government, obviously, we're spending more of our taxpayer dollars, which increases inflation, and we increase the entire cycle. Um, and by the way, also, when now those jobs suddenly they appeared at one point, now they disappeared. You know what that's going to do? That's going to create pressure on the Fed to reduce interest rates at a time where people are saying interest rates are too high. And all of a sudden, right before the election, mm -hmm. interest rates are coming down. Easy money is going to be coming back. By the way, obviously going to compound inflation, but that's down the line. They're not worried about that three, four months from now. They're never worried. The Democrats are never worried about what's going to go on in the future. They're worried about the moment. They're in the moment. And they're looking to reduce interest rates so people can pay less money their mortgage, feel like they have some more money. All of a sudden, magically, it's all going to come together for the election. Um, before I let you go, I want to quickly look at Donald Trump's campaign. This week, he indicated if he's elected, doctors could be charged for performing surgeries on minors without parental consent. This is to protect children from sexual mutilation, he says. Do you welcome this? I mean, you know, it's so funny. You know, people ask me why I do the videos that I do. And really, it's about trying to influence the centre and the centre-left. Mm. Now, if I tell people on the centre, centre-left that... Um, that the debt that the hard left wants to trans children, they look at me, they go, that's not true. Nobody wants to trans children. That is not a thing. You know, I did a video, Gabriela, where I went out and I had a hidden cameras, I had a petition for a fictitious four-year-old that wanted to have no. medical surgery transition for a man to a woman. And you know what? All of these leftist students sign my petition. It's a thing, right? Yeah. And yeah, look, we there has to be a, a price to be paid when a child wants to have invasive medical surgery that cannot be reversed, yes, there needs to be a, a toll to pay because that's not the way this should work, right? When Walt said, I love it when they had that whole debate um, and they were talking about how Walt was talking about taking children away from people who didn't want their children to transition who were underage. And they kept saying, like, 
you know, the, the left was saying, that's not true. That's not, it is true. Yeah. I looked at, I went, look, sometimes what we say on the right isn't true, or they say the left isn't true. <laughs> I like to dig into the details. I looked into it. No, the courts could actually take your child away. They were trying to push this through. They did, thankfully. But they're trying to push it through so you could take a child away. That's the reality. And yes, I think there should be a penalty. Ami, well done and well said. Keep up the great work. And thank you so much for joining us on Power Hour. Always my pleasure.